it is a beautiful morning good morning everybody we're just walking with the dogs thinking about some things and uh, you know sometimes when I wake up you know some ideas flood my mind and uh, I felt like I'd share some of my crazy thoughts with you today so here goes talking about uh, I saw somebody post just a, a question on what they thought about electric motors and this is on a mechanics forum and uh, the only response I saw out of the hundreds I didn't take the time to read very many of them but the one that stuck out to me was uh, a fellow was like I'll be burning shine while y'all are doing your electric and still have a lower carbon footprint and I thought, yeah, my thoughts exactly. You know, the best way to basically run my old trucks is to gather up all the old rotten fruit every fall, the apples and the peaches and stuff that fall on the ground and then just rot. Like, all that can be turned into ethanol. You know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gallons of ethanol. Certainly enough to... Uh, run both of my trucks for a year um, and I could do that year after year after year after year because this is orchard country and we just happen to have a lot of rotten fruit that just goes to waste and so it got me thinking that really the, the only reason we actually have like these kind of problems in our world today is because of centralization that's it. All these people are trying to virtue signal like, oh, let's save the earth. Well, if everybody, if, if, if the powers that be really wanted to save the earth and were really concerned about climate change and the environment and the destruction humans are doing, whatever, then everybody would be at home making their own energy, cleaning their own water, growing their own food. And there would be mass decentralization of all resources and energy. But no. No, no, no. They, they, they only want to save the earth if, if they can keep their centralized power. Have you noticed that? The only people, the only way anybody's ever interested in cleaning up the environment or, or uh, making this place a better place to live, less pollution, etc. Only if they get to keep their their money and, and keep keep the power centralized and you know that's kind of like how it how it is with every industry though too you know <clears throat> bikes 99% of bike manufacturing is concentrated in Taiwan and China right now it's absurd bikes of all dang things you know here in America it's hard to get a new bike just why I run a used bike shop because it's better to just build the old ones. But <clears throat> if it wasn't for that centralization, which has been happening over the last 30 or 40 years, I mean, bike companies have just been bought up by conglomerates like dirty whores over the last, you know, several decades. And now what you have is just a few really, really, really large bike companies who concentrate almost all of the production in China and Taiwan. It's only 1% of bikes made worldwide are made in other countries, USA, Germany, France, Italy, Japan, but um, not very many. And those ones tend to be more expensive because they're usually handcrafted. Um, but it's just, uh, you can kind of see what's going on. You can really see what's going on. And over the last year, you can really, really see the power grab. I mean, just look at the wealth transfer that's happened over the last 12 months, 14, 16 months. More centralization is what they're pushing for. They think they're going to save everybody through mass, mass, mass centralization. Everybody depends on one source for everything. And uh, I got to tell you, you know, that's just 
pure evil, pure Satanism, if you ask me. God did not create this earth for us all to concentrate in mega cities and sort of a central earthly power. That's just not how, how he designed this place for us. No. So, you want to save the earth, you want to become free, become independent, shift your focus on to decentralizing your life. Get away from these centralized resources. Get your energy from natural local resources like the sun, the wind, the water. Energy is carried in several forms. It's all around us. If you just take the time to harness it, I mean, look around me here. Look how much is out there. Right now, what you see is miles and miles and miles of pure life and pure energy. That's what that mountain is. And I got to tell you, there's more mountain than there are people. They might not tell you that. They might not want you to think that. They might want you to think that this, this earth is overcrowded. I can tell you it's not. As somebody who's traveled just around the U.S., I haven't even been around the world, okay? <laughs> the United States is a pretty big place, but it pales in comparison to Africa or Russia, Siberia, even Australia, you know? And I can just tell you, there's, there's, there's plenty, plenty for everybody. Basically, the way I envision it is we should all be living out in our own little forests and producing our own food, cleaning our own water, making our own power, and just having like the basics be decentralized and independent. So you're not paying a power bill, so you're not paying a water bill. So you don't have to go to the grocery store for everything. And I'm not saying we should get rid of all those things. You know, sometimes it's nice to have a power grid, you know. I'm not saying that these things are inherently evil in and of themselves, but we shouldn't be 100% dependent on them, you know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. So, that's how you save everything. And it's, it's pretty obvious now. If you can't see it, just look around. As long as there is centralization of food, medicine, energy, water, this world's going to be a pretty miserable place to live. Our constitution was written to prevent centralization of all of these things. They weren't so clear about that, but that's, that's pretty much the intent. Bill of Rights, all that, I mean, sovereignty and freedom is our God-given right. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Whatever happened to that? Now everybody's all concerned about safety. Make sure you're safe. Well, I gotta tell you something about safety. If you're concerned about safety 100% of the time, that means you're living in fear. And fear is the worst disease of all. You see, the pandemic that you heard about on the news was not the real one. The real one was fear. They instilled fear into the hearts of billions of people around the world. And that pandemic is still raging. I never caught that bug myself. I'm not afraid of this bullshit. I chose to come out here and become independent. 
years ago before all this shit happened because I listened to others who were talking about these events and what was to come, and they were right. I'm not going to mention any names because I can't remember them all, but, you know, there, there have been dozens, hundreds even, of individuals that have stepped forward over the years and predicted many of the things that are happening today, many of the things that happened over the last 18 months. So, anyway, I hope you all can take something away from this and come up with a plan to improve your lives and uh, make yourselves as independent as possible. I'm not 100% independent, but I'm certainly not 100% dependent either. So, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Till then... Peace out.